What's going on guys, it's your boy Jack, aka The Balding Reefer, coming at you with today's video, which is part nine of the Koi facility, which is filling full of water, putting on the filtration, and building the pond lids. So, let's go. Okay, so for those of you that are new to the channel, hello, my name is Jack, I'm indeed The Balding Reefer, or should I say bald now, I specialize in tropical, cold water, pond, and marine fish as well. If you are new, if you can swipe up and hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and leave me a like. It massively helps me out as a creator um, to push these videos out to a further audience. And if you're returning, welcome back, my people. As ever, you know the drill. I'm going to spin you around. I'm going to show you what a gorgeous day it is today. So all the frost has finally gone, as you can see. I'd probably say it's about eight, nine degrees outside. It's probably 12 to 13 degrees inside, but it's looking absolutely stunning. Okay, so for those of you who've been following along, you will know last week we rendered the front of the pods. Um, we put the liners in, um, and we also touched a little bit about filtration, but this week what we're gonna be doing is as I explained in last week's video, link above if you've not already seen that, let me just quickly spin you around. So we've got big famous Jace, the lady killer himself. He's up here today. We've got Benny Boy. So we've got the, what we're going to do in essence is we're just going to lay the filtration out and we're going to dry fit both pods on the floor and show you the difference that we're going to be doing. Obviously the first pod here is the All Pond Solutions pod. So we've got the skimmer, then we're going to have flexi hose going from the skimmer into the pump and then the pump uh, going from here into the backy shower that's then going to sit on some 4v2 lamps on the top but we're going to connect all this up in a second and guide you through it properly then the second pod we're going to do the american way aren't we so we're going to fit it with the that's it with the hard pipe fit from the pump Right the way to the filter, back to the shower. Spot on, not a problem at all. We've got a load of spare bits as well that we brought up. So we've got UV pond clarifiers. Ben did the tote yesterday. Um, grafting away. How long does it take you to do this one? Because you want to get it perfect? It's on two hours. Oh, me nearly two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. So in essence, what we're going to be doing on here is as you can see the elbow coming out there, we're actually going to be sticking uh, some tubing up there and then boring through the sheets that we're going to put, be put on on there there's a hell of a lot going on today so obviously make sure you stick around for the whole video because there's so many different aspects incorporated in here big jace at the moment is just literally boring some holes in the 4b2 because the 4b2 is just going to sit down here on the side of the pod obviously we do have a little bit of a damp patch on the floor but i'm not too worried about that at the moment i think it is just literally condensation coming through on the budget liner versus the all pond solutions liner as you can see there's absolutely nothing down there so we're just going to keep an eye on the water level once we've got the 4b2 on and screwed in we're then just going to put a little chalk line on the side just to monitor how far away the water line is from that chalk line to see if it drops any further if it does we'll rip out the budget one and we'll put another all pond solutions one in here because i am super super impressed with this stuff i mean just look at it it looks like glass and i cannot wait to get coin it next weekend possibly on this video if we put some goldies in to help with a fish cycle yeah possibly. so make sure you're sticking around because like i say there's so much going on today let me snap back to you in a moment though when we're starting to install these and i'll show you exactly what we're going to be doing Jason just cut the first piece of wood down so we can get it lined on the inside of here. Don't fall away. <laughs> so we're just trying to make sure the piece of timber is level at the moment. Good to go. Benny Boy's just in the background now putting some UPVC UPV cement on top of the DIY spray bar that we've made. Right, 
Well, I don't think that's going to be going anywhere, Flower. And we're still Bob on level. Just putting the roll plug in first, then the screw, giving it a little bit of a tap through, and then just ripping it in nice and tight. Sound as a pad. So, me and Ben were sat there thinking, how's he gonna get this level? And the little genius that he is, has got this piece level, and then put another board across the top to make sure the back one's level. But the question is, is that back ball level? Because it looks like it's off skew. That back one does. Oh yeah, it is there, but not there. Ah, see, it's methods. That's what you get for jumping in on a tradesman. Set, mate, do to do that? I'll be, <laughs> be throwing you through that me in a minute. <laughs> so Jace is just in the process now, we're trimming back all the excess liner. Now the um, timber frame is in place. We've already cut down the first board. What size did we go for, Jay? Uh, 30 inch, I think. Yeah, it's a 30 inch uh, length, because obviously the back is always gonna sit above here, and we just need to bore two holes in the middle. So we can put our downspouts through. Okay, so the depth of the box is roughly uh, 11 and a quarter inches. We're actually gonna be put, cutting the gray tubing to eight inches here to give us just over a two and a quarter inch uh, gap that we can put the top piece in. This tubing here is what we're gonna be cutting down. And we're just gonna, again, use the mortise tool just to quickly rip through this. Yeah. <laughs> and I quote, let me take the high vis off to get the gun show on camera. Look at that, Pete, you're getting flexing. Laura's gonna be impressed with you when you get home. She's gonna be like, baby, come here. <laughs> the tongue was out then as well. <laughs> Red just in the process at the minute of grinding out his hole. So hey, we've got the two white bits on the front of here. That's all he's doing on there at the moment, he's just so we can get the elbows in. Because obviously this, this filter box here is going to be for the second pod there. So if you cut the hole a little bit smaller, file it down, give us more of a snug fit. So then we can uh, put some silicone on it. Okay, so we've bored out the holes. Now it's just time to get some of the uh, stick light. Yeah, we can dolphin it out, can't we? You know what I mean? <laughs> now the editing's gone up a notch, mate. We can actually tell them what it's called and just <laughs> dolphin it out. Look at that. Anybody think we know what we're doing here, Flower? Oof. So I had to bag it then. Now it's just a matter of sucking the old finger and getting it all smooth around the edge. Now, just in case if you're wondering why I had to dolphin it out when I said stick like it's because it literally is called sticks like and it does actually stick like it says it does this stuff you can even uh, set under water then it's just going to do the insides then it's just a matter of cutting another four of these down and then like I say, once the uh, 
lava rocks actually in there it is going to sort of hold these and lock them in place anyway but we just wanted that extra little bit of security and then we've got a grid to put over the front here to stop any rocks potentially blocking all of that up okay so as promised we're going to do a dry fix so you can see how we're actually going to install all the pumps now this whole top this wholesale here has already been cut down and what i mean by wholesale is these bits here so obviously at the moment this does 6,000 litres per hour, but obviously it's going to restrict the amount of water flow going through the actual pipe in itself. So what we're going to do is this, this end hose cell here is 38 mil. So is this, so it's going to be a real, real snug fit. So all I want to do is get a hacksaw blade and just literally cut the end of this hose tail. It has already got a little groove in there as well. And this is one of the common mistakes I see on people's ponds all the time, where they don't actually cut the ends of the hose tails off, but we'll save that because we can always reuse that on something else. Then it's just a matter of getting this and pushing it right on the end. Obviously we will butt it up in a second, but I just want to sort of show at the moment what we're doing. Same bit on this one, cut this hose tail down, connect this one on, and then show you how it connects up to the back of each other. get all the frayed edges off so you don't go back in the pond. And it's just a matter of again, same principle. Getting that on nice and snug. Now let me go and grab the back of shower boxes. Okay, so we've got some lava rock here, we've got some lava rock there. If you just want to come over here and have a look in here then. So at the moment, these have got the uh, six. We've got these grids here, but I'm literally, I'm not gonna bother gluing these in place. I'm just gonna literally put them over the front because when the lava rock's in there, it's gonna lock it all in and hold it in place anyway. So as you guys will have seen on my other videos, like on the All Pond Solution, um, external filter, link above for that. Lava Rock is a fantastic biological filtration, so that's why we're using it in these pods. Now all I'm doing is I'm putting this grid in front here, and then I'm just gonna literally move the rock all around it. Same on this side. Move the rock all the way around it. And like I say, these grids are here, just to stop any rocks potentially falling through. Let me grab the other box. So I can tip some more in. with that what we'll do now is we'll get this top box and all we're going to do is simply sit that on top of those pipes that we put in but I can show you this now on the inside come on so we've got these in here now that are locked in place we've got the grids that are locked in place all we're going to do now is just a matter of sitting that on top then we're going to fill this full of mechanical filtration which is going to be some of the sponges then it's just a matter of connecting this onto the bottom of there and then we're good to go. So if we start from this back end, water's going to cascade through the top of the skimmer and it's got this little basket in there. This skimmer is from All Pond Solutions, I will leave a link down in the description below. 
we're going to put some lava rock in here just to weight it down. The water's going to travel through the pipe, through the 6,000 litre per hour pump, through all this tubing. It'll come up the top through here. It'll cascade down through the spray bar where Ben's drilled these holes in here. That the water will then continue to cascade through there and then eventually it'll feed through the front on here. But like I say, this is just the dry run of it. I will show you it wet run in a second. Okay, so the second pod, which is yet to be named, as promised, dry run of that one. Same principle as the All Pond Solutions pod, where we've got the lava rock in the bottom for the uh, biological um, filtration. We've got the four gray tubing in just to hold the top box up. We've got the grids in front, just to stop any lava rocks potentially going through. And as the same as the other one, this one sits on top. What we've done on this one is we've drilled through to create our own sort of DIY spray bar, saves us having to go out and buy one. Same as this one here, we've drilled through on this one as well, just like Blue Peter, here's one Ben made earlier. Now, the way this one's gonna be slightly different is we're actually doing what I would class as what the Americans do on their ponds, where they use the UPVC tubing. I wanna see what the difference is versus using flexi pipe versus the solid UPVC tubing so I can give you guys the positives and negatives of doing both. Now, same principle, we've got the All Pond Solutions pump here, we've got an unbranded one down here, you just need to cut off this hose tail on the end. So that's off, get rid of the frayed edges. Now, difference being on this one, is this pump here can also act as a, um, like a fountain that you can come out the top. She can get a tube attachment that goes in here. She can have it not only filtering, but also blowing through the top as a fountain. We don't want that, so we've got it shut off. All we want to do now is get some of this PVC cement and give a nice, thick, generous coat all the way around it. The reason why we're using PVC cement on here is so the tubing does not blow off. We'll also put a bit of UVV cement inside of here. And then it's just a matter of feeding it on and just letting it rest. Now that should be absolutely rock solid tight within the next 10 minutes. More than I'm gonna do now, just put a little bit more around the edge just to make sure we've got that nice bond that we want and we'll just leave that there. Now, this UPVC cement does come, so not the UPVC cement, sorry, the UPVC tubing does come in a whole host of different colours because it may only be a temporary solution because I've used the flexi hose before, I've not done this method, I've just seen it done a lot online, so I want to give it a try myself. I weren't particularly bothered about what kind of colour tubing went in. Now, same principle as before, once this is set, We've then got our uptake pipe, which will sit in here, and we'll UPVC cement that end, and then the other end that's gonna sit in there. But let me snap back to you in a moment while we wait while this is going off, and then the next shot will be us actually installing this and the all-pond solution one on the pods. Okay, so we're imminently about to install the filtration on here. Uh, I've intentionally left a little bit of the sawdust on top because I wanna be able to show you how the skimmer is gonna work. What Jace is doing at the moment is he's just literally marking out where the two drop holes have got to be that are going to come down because obviously with the covers being on the back, the back cover's constantly going to stay on and then we've got an ingenious method in regards to how we're going to be able to actually suspend these. We've still yet to cut the front one down on here but we'll get that done today but obviously we're just in a rush now because we want to be able to uh, start adding fish in here. I say fish, goldfish to help start the, um, the fish cycle. Obviously we've got the correct amount of uh, bio balls to be able to put in here, which is the filter start, and we're just gonna add some goldfish in here just to aid uh, with the fish cycle. We will be doing a full update on how to set up a pond, how to get it filtered, ready for action and whatnot, so do not worry about that. But in essence, what we're gonna be doing on these back filter boxes here is these elbows that come out, we're gonna be putting a downspout through. So the downspout is gonna be 32 mil. The hole that we're gonna be putting it in is gonna be 38 mil. We don't mind how difference Just to give us enough of a circumference to be able to get the pipe through the top. But let me snap back to you in a second when we're starting to bore the holes out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Perfecto. So all we've got to do now, drill the second hole, and get the next one in. Solvent well's oh. looking about somewhere. There you go. This one. Okay, so the first pump's in. Obviously we've got the white tubing going down and we've got it on a coupling just down there in the corner. Jay's just about, sounds like it's raining out there. Jay's just about to uh, solvent weld the top so then we can push it in, leave that 10 minutes and we'll be good to go. So while that's going off, we'll get the all pond solutions filtration system installed in here. And then we can pair them both up and we can see if Ben's silicone skills are up to scratch. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. Okay, so both sets of filters are in now. So this one's in, obviously on the white hard pipe. We did test run this one. It was a slight leak, we were just waiting for that to cure, which we'll show you at the end of the video. That one working as well. This one here, we've just quickly turned it on for literally 30 seconds just to make sure the water flows through, but we're going to give it a proper test run now. Before we plug it in though, <coughs> obviously you've seen the dry run. What I want to do now is show you the, the wet run. So we've got stones in the bottom of the All Pond Solutions Pond Skimmer. Let me just make sure that's straight on there. There you go. So we've got stones in the bottom of the All Pond Solutions Pond Skimmer. We've just put some filter floss in the top there just to catch the debris in the top of the water to be able to show you how this pond skimmer works. It'll come down this tubing through the 6,000 litre per hour uh, pump, which is there, and then it'll go up through the side of this white tubing, through the spray bar, and then should come crashing back through there. But if you want to do the honours, Jay. So as you can see now, the pond skimmer is an auto levelling pond skimmer. So it'll find its own level in the water. Oh, he says, bear with, a little bit of an air gap in there. Let's wait for the air gap to run itself off. See, we show the good, the bad and the ugly on here. Bear with me a second. Okay, so we figured it out, we'd actually got an airlock in there. We were putting too much filter floss in the pond skimmer. But as you can see now, all this debris that's literally sat on top of the water is slowly but surely being sucked and gunked up all into here. It's them feeding around this pipe down here. It's going up through the white plastic and then it's literally clattering down there into the water, which is obviously offering fantastic amounts of uh, oxygen rate going back into the water. Obviously we've still got in another week's video uh, the pressurised air system video to be added on here as well because each one of these pods is going to have two big air bricks in here as well just because of the volume of fish that we're going to be keeping, breeding and growing on in here as well. But I just want to give a massive, massive shout out and a big thank you to All Pond Solutions obviously for sponsoring the pod. First time I've ever used a pond skimmer myself uh, and it's working an absolute dream and it's only been up and running all the sort of five minutes. But as you can see already, it's already started to pull all the gunk off the surface. And to be fair, considering this pond schema is, is supposed to be used on a bigger pump, it's doing an absolutely fantastic job, even on here. Like I say, all it's designed to do is sit just underneath the surface like that, beading all the water over the edge. So I'm super, super impressed with this. So again, big shout out to All Pond Solutions. The second pod that we've got in there at the moment, Jace is just currently about to start uh, solvent welding on. Uh, the tube back onto the side and then we're actually going to give this another test run just to see if we've stopped it from leaking failing that we're just going to keep this pod here up and running for today and obviously we've got the cover to go over the front but i mean i don't know about you but i'm stupidly impressed with this today and there you go both both sets of the funnels now have started to work themselves into the same sort of power Obviously, you can never be 100% sure. You can never be 100% sure that the rocks in the front aren't adjusting them slightly. For example, if there's a, if there's a bigger piece of lava rock stuck behind one of the pipes, it might be slowing the flow right down. But I'm more than happy with that. What we want to do now is, because these here are actually sitting above the tote, 
because the totes are actually sitting above the plastic sheeting. We just want to run it through for half hour, 45 minutes, just to make sure it's not backfilling or anything like that. In the top box, we've just got filter floss and we've got foam pads as well, yellow, green and black. That's starting to come out now. Like I say, just while it fills up, we're just going to make sure it's not backfilling or anything like that. And we just want to keep our eye on this bottom grip on the moment. Now, we have already added some dechlorinator into the water. Unfortunately, I didn't get that on shot. However, when we add the dechlorinator to this shot, I will actually put that one on there so you guys can see it. All we're going to do now is just put some of this filter floss on top of the foam pads that's in there at the back. Because eventually, as this starts to work its way through, it's going to pick up all the crap and all the gunk that's on there. But, I mean, I'm super impressed. The All Pond Solutions Pond Liner is definitely, definitely an awful lot better than this one. I mean, for example, if you look on here, you can see the folds just down there. However, on here, there's absolutely no folds whatsoever down any of those. So I'm super, super impressed with how these are looking. Obviously, don't forget as well, the flow rate out of these is going to be stronger than these because this pump that's in here is only a 3,000 litre per hour pump. This one here is a 6,000 litre per hour pump. And you can just see there the way that that's gushing through. And I think it looks absolutely incredible and I cannot wait to get some fishing. Big shout out to Jace today. He's been up and down these ponds like a rat up a drain pipe, literally ferrying to and fro, putting the bits on, getting all the uh, pieces of wood cut in. So big shout out and big thanks to Jay. He's absolutely worked his backside off today. But super impressed with where this is up to so far. We're just going to see if we can potentially get some fish added in here today with the bio walls. So I'll uh, snap back to you in a second and we can all find out together. Okay, so we've added in the Pond Rescue Bacteria Balls. We've done about two hand You can never really add too much of this stuff into the pod anyway. And we're also going to be running it with a fish cycle as well. Now, in next week's video, we're going to be doing full tests on the water parameters, advising you guys on exactly where it needs to be. Like I've just said to Dave, that's stuck behind the camera, two things that survive a nuclear strike. One of them being cockroaches, the second one being goldfish. So I've got no doubt with the sheer volume of water here and the, and the small amount of goldfish that we're putting in, it would take far longer for this water to go south on us and us lose any goldfish okay. that's worth any risk. So we're going to be absolutely fine. But all we've done on these is we've temperature acclimated them because we've been outside in Ben's pond. And now because this is a fresh water system and obviously we've got the bio balls in there I don't necessarily mind about adding the water in but if you want to lean over Benny boy Dave you want to jump in the middle so you can see him go in ready steady welcome to the new home So all we'll do now is we'll leave these in here, probably cycling for a week or two. We'll constantly be keeping an eye on the ammonia levels and the nitrite levels and the nitrate levels on here. Obviously it's all relative depending on what the temperature of the water is and things like that. So we'll come up and we'll retest it in a couple of days just to make sure the parameters are exactly where they need them to be. And then when we're ready to get the koi in, we'll take the goldfish out and it'll be a koi only system. Super impressed with the filtration, the way that's running. A lot of oxygen going in there more than happy with it though but again big thanks to all pond solutions for sponsoring this pod the equipment's fantastic it's working an awful lot better than i thought it was the liners second to none and don't forget we're going to be doing the uh difference in pond liners as well okay super super impressed we've got fishing here today i think it looks really really smart as well especially with the top tool rendered now Obviously, we've already got the board put down that we're going to be able to put over the top, which is just going to help insulate the pods as well. The goldfish will be absolutely fine. It's how I've always cycled my ponds. Beneficial bacteria, a few goldfish in there, 
I mean, like I say, this is two and a half thousand litres, and there's like eight small goldfish in there about yay big. There's one that's about yay big, so it'll be absolutely fine. But like I say, make sure that you are subscribed because I am going to be going through in depth analysis on how I cycle my pods to make sure they're up to scratch, that no matter what we put in there, they're going to be absolutely fine. Uh, and I'm looking forward to doing that one as well because you guys know me, I like doing the sort of sciencey aspects to the videos and stuff and actually explaining how things are working properly and stuff like that. But I'm going to draw it to a close there. Hope you like what you've seen today. Leave me a like and a comment down below. Uh, let me know what you think. But as ever, uh, follow me on social media. Uh, Facebook and Twitter is at The Baldwin Reaper. Instagram is slightly different, popping up just down here now. That's at the dot Baldwin dot Reaper. But as ever, stay safe, stay sane. Most importantly, people, stay happy. Baldwin Reaper, out.